Okay, when we left off, um, I said I was going to tell you about some of the other types. So, so far we've just been working with integers, but, um, and we were working with my age. Uh, excuse me. Um, so, let's say we're back in elementary school, and you get that annoying kid in your class, and you ask him, like, hey, I'm, I'm eight years old. And the other kid is just like, oh, really? You know, well, I'm eight and a half years old. Just to, you know, one-up you. Or half-up you. Or whatever you want to call it. But, uh... You want to store this age inside of this. So, before we said this was an integer, let's see what happens if we try to... Uh... Do that. See? It won't let us. Because we can only store whole numbers in there. So what we need to make is a float. So float is when we need uh, these uh, decimal place uh, numbers. Um, sure, you can just use floats all the time. But the, the, I believe the reason why you'd want to use integers is because technically a computer can only hold a number so large, right? So if you need that whole number to count up to a really high number, it <laughs> it will be higher if you don't have to worry about decimal points. But if you have to worry about decimal points, it takes a little bit more information, so you can't count as high because it takes more information to store that number, if that makes sense, uh, which it probably doesn't. But uh, if you think you'll be working with whole numbers, use ints. If not, use floats. That's a simple, <laughs> simple way to do it. So, um, so integers hold whole numbers, floats hold uh, decimal place numbers, but what about names? Can we, what will we use to hold words? If you remember in the last episode I d did hello world, and that was inside of quotation marks. Actually, that was a literal uh, piece of data, and that literal piece of data is called a string. Actually, strings might be objects, but uh, I forget. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> uh, so <laughs> we put our name in there. My name is Chris. Like that. So if I trace name. Ooh, wait a moment. I just realized something. Okay, it's, it's safe. Be careful of uh, how you name your... Um, variables because if it's a keyword that's already used by the hex language you might have troubles so like if mine I want to do var as a uh, variable name see that's no good because uh, you know it's already taken so I should have mentioned that earlier so just to be safe let's call this my name and then my name and we hit play And bam, there it is. There's my name and how old I was many, many years ago. So we've talked about integers, floats, bar, uh, number, which is an integer equals five, something like that. And I think uh, the last type that we'll talk about now is booleans. So a boolean is a value uh, that equals true or false. It's used for some logical things that we're going to work with later. Um, some if statements and things like that. Um, so what we'll do is uh, let's say we want to store something that is either true or false. For example, um, I am the coolest and that is a boolean whoops b o o l boolean value it's either true or false and in this case this is true of course 
<laughs> okay. Anyways, so yes, these are the four major, I think, uh, uh, data types uh, that we'll be using. Uh, there might be some others, but these are, I think, the most useful. Am I forgetting anything? I don't think I am. Um, later on, instead of data types, we might be using objects. Um, as a data type, but uh, before we get there, we'll hold off on that. But uh, next, uh, here we're just storing single values inside of uh, uh, these variables, but sometimes you want to store a set of values. So that is when a very useful thing called an array comes in. So let's say we have a my friends ages <laughs> something like that so it will be of the type array right but arrays have to store a certain type of data inside of it for example integers like that so inside of my friends ages I can set it up where maybe a friend that's 25, it set it up within, within square brackets and separated by commas. We'll just put in a list of integers 25, um, 87, uh, 30, uh, 12. I have a very wide range of ages, aged friends, <laughs> if that makes sense. So now, uh, if we trace, you know, friends ages there they are 25 87 30 12 like that so um, <laughs> let's say we just want to pluck out one of our friends ages um, each item inside of this array has a number associated with it and that is called its index right so we have one two three four four um, ages let's say we want this one here 30 naturally we would think one two three that's the third one but actually these are numbered from zero so zero one two so if I wanted to get this one it needs to be number two or index number index two so to get that number out we'll go to friends ages and then afterwards again inside of square brackets we'll put a two so when it comes after the name like this it's actually the index of the item in the array so if I hit play I should see Chris as my name and then 30 right there as my friend's age. So um, in the future we will be talking about arrays in more detail but um, that will be it for now. I think once we start talking about loops um, things will become more clear. So <laughs> We'll see you in the next episode, and until then, goodbye.